going on YouTube? It's your boy Humble Warrior. <clears throat> Coming back at you guys with another video. Um, I did a reaction video to the Western Conference Finals Game 4. Uh, where the Lakers were beat by the Denver Nuggets to be swept. Um, 4-0 where LeBron dropped 40 points in this final playoff game of this season. I watched a recent video where they did a comparison between Jordan and his um, game six NBA Finals in 1998 against Utah Jazz versus the LeBron James led LA Lakers and the Denver Nuggets in this year's Western Conference Finals. And basically they mirrored their numbers, how they impacted the game at this latter stage in their career. Um, I was fortunate enough to watch the 1998 um, series between Utah and, and Chicago. And Chicago at that time was, was a old battered team. Um, they had aging, they, they had aging stars, um, that of Dennis Rodman, Scottie Pippen, of course, Michael Jordan, who was 35, um, doing that, doing that series. Um, but to only focus on that, that pure game or that game itself, which was a closeout game for the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan had 45 points in that game. He scored 16 of those points in the fourth quarter including the go-ahead game-winning shot with, what was it, 5.9 seconds left in which Utah was unable to make a basket to actually send the game to Game 7. Um, so Michael Jordan ended up winning his sixth championship and a back-to-back -back three-peat on an aging, um, declining Bulls squad. Although people do believe they would have probably made it back to the finals. I'm not going to say that because they're, Michael Jordan understood their entire roster was basically aging out and the league was getting younger. So the Bulls management made the right decision in terms of moving on, but that's neither here nor there. LeBron James at 38 dropped 40 points. Now, if you look at the totality of that game, which I actually did, majority of his points came from the three-point line and layups. And he did make, I think he made, I think he made 10 free throws, I believe it was. But majority of his points were layups and threes. The same exact game that he's been doing for the last decade. But people think it's so monumental that he scored 40 points with little to no impact on winning the game. And his final seconds to actually win the game, he bricked the ball off the side of the backboard. And then instead of him actually pulling up because if you watch the play again, um, Jamal Murray never went out to follow his guy because he already knew that LeBron was not going to pass the ball. LeBron was going to try to get to the rim, which he had an angle on Gordon. But because Murray stayed in that same defensive spot and beat LeBron to his spot and then actually held on to the ball to where he could not get it above his waist to get a shot off until the very final second, that was a great defensive play by Jamal Murray and an even better call by the head coach who understood what the what his totality of the situation was. Now, Michael Jordan in game six with under a minute left, actually with under 30 seconds left, made two huge plays. First play being um, against the Jazz, he made a hell of a defensive stop against um, Carl Malone in which he oh, I didn't know he was turning but he made a hell of a stop in which he pretended like he was going the back way of the um, goal um, following trailing his guy instead he decoyed long enough to have Carl Malone not understanding his blind side is where, was, uh, where his blind side was unprotected and he swiped the ball from his blind side and stripped him of the ball. Then he proceeded to, to dribble up the court by himself in the sequence of a matter of a few seconds. And over Brian Russell, he made the greatest clutch shot in NBA history by basically escorting the man to his right, crossing back over to his left, pulling up from 18 feet 
and knocking down an iconic what the hell are you doing jump shot that will forever be frozen in time in which he was able to secure the victory for the chicago bulls there's nothing else to compare these two about now people want to talk about how how jordan was swept against the celtics twice yes he was he was swept twice by the boston celtics but lebron james himself been swept three different times in three different decades jordan got swept early in his career being swept is nothing to be proud of but the mere fact that he learned from all of that and the cast offs that he had during that time i mean he actually elevated their game to where they could actually compete in that series against boston and they still got swept now michael jordan had i mean not michael jordan lebron james had ad and a few other decent players but ad is the most notable superstar that he had in that series and they got swept by denver 4-0 and it's almost as if people give him a pass for what he was able to do in terms of points and production in game four. To me, you don't, you shouldn't get a pass for that because at the end of the day, a lot of those games, they had an opportunity to win. But for whatever reason, he didn't, he did not seal the deal. So you don't really get a pass in that regard. You, you play the game to win. Not to pad up the score sheet or the stat sheet to to find an escape to, to put blame on somebody else. So, with that being said, after being swept this year, LeBron James can never be considered as the GOAT. It shouldn't be a conversation anymore. Um, he's he's still in the top five. No, There's no dispute in that part, but... In terms of Mount Rushmore, no. He's right outside of it. He, well, no. I'm not, I'll am say he's in top 10 all time. Top 5 is hard to say. Because his game, he like, like even Kwame Brown said it, he doesn't have a signature move. The only thing we know that LeBron James would do is lower his shoulder, get to the rim and dunk. And even that's declining. So he don't have a signature go-to move. Like Jordan was a fadeaway, so was Kobe. Magic Johnson had his pull-up game. He could he could elevate over you. Larry Bird had his patented, you know, um 18-foot jump shot. Tim Duncan had the bank shot. Um the list goes on and on. But he's in the top ten all time, but he just he's not in the top five or he's not on Mark Rushmore. At least not to me. But that comparison is dead now. And in this video, I just laid out why it is dead and why those two really shouldn't be compared anymore. Now, if you want to compare it to Magic Johnson, that really shouldn't be a conversation either. The closest player that he reminds you of in all reality is Sean Kemp. He was just a smarter basketball player with better passing skills than what Sean Kemp had. And Sean Kemp was an athletic freak of nature. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on this. I and mean, what do you think? I mean, how you feel about it? Let me know in the comment section. Don't mind entertaining it. Because, hey, it's, it's fun to me. Peace.